Hello and welcome to my video, lesson 8.2, where we're going to talk about periodic graphs. So, um, periodic graphs are going to make use of um, sine functions and cosine functions, but usually just sine functions. And uh, notice how we just talked about radians and degrees, so we're going to actually talk about that here as well. So, um, to start off, a sine function um, is at the zero point, if you think about the x-axis here, the zero point, okay, it is at zero. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Just wait a second. Okay, so it's at zero at that point. Okay, it also reaches zero at the uh, 180 degree point which I'm going to try to put here, and the 360 degree point here, okay? So, um, and then up here, it'll be, uh, maybe I'll just label this as, this is 1, and down here, this is negative 1, okay? Uh, how should I label this? This will be 180 degrees. This will be 360 degrees. Okay, there are some important uh, markers in between as well. 90 degrees is going to be helpful. Um, and so is 270. And we're also going to go in the negatives in a moment. But let's just try this out first. So at 90 degrees, it's going to be at its maximum. So at 1. At 270, it's going to be at its minimum. Whoops which is down here at negative one. And so you can imagine that it'll make some sort of curve like this. And this is what we call a sine function. So let's continue it on towards the end uh, on the left hand side as well. Uh, looks like perhaps we, uh, we could have use of a little bit more space, but that's okay. It's going to look something close to this, roughly. Um, let's just mark off these points. So 360 degrees, negative 360 degrees, negative 180, negative 270, and negative 90. And now if we think about it in terms of uh, radians, it's going to be different. So radians still going to start at zero okay and still going to be plus one and minus one for the y axis uh, but for radians we would say pi half we'd say pi we'd say uh, three pi over two and then we'd say two pi over here on the left for the negatives we'd say negative pi half we'd say negative pi We'd say negative 3 pi over 2, and we'd say negative 2 pi. Okay, so again, this is a little bit uh, not perfect drawing, but I think it kind of gets the point across. All right, um, but a cosine graph looks different. Okay, so let's try to show the differences between them. So a cosine graph, instead of starting up or, or at zero, it's going to start up at one. So its maximum is going to be there. And then at the 90 degree, actually, it will get to the zero. At the um, 180 degree, it'll get somewhere at the, at the uh, minimum. Then at the 270, it'll get back to the zero. And then 360, it'll get back to... Uh, to the maximum. Okay, so um, we have a, a couple markings down, but let's uh, show the degrees here as well. 180 degrees to 70 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing into the negative direction so 
so negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270 degrees, negative 360 degrees. I'm just going to extend my line here, I guess. Okay, and we're going to follow the pattern backwards as well. So it's going to be at 0 at 90 and 0 at negative 270. It's going to be uh, at the minimum at negative 180. It's going to be at the maximum at uh, negative 360. So the graph is going to look something like this. Not perfectly, but something remotely like that. There you go. Okay, so roughly speaking, that is about right. Um, so now if we again do the same sort of thing with radians, pi half would be pi, it'd be 3 pi half, it'd be 2 pi, and then it would be into the negative. So negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi halves, negative pi half, oh sorry this would just be negative pi, negative pi half. So you can see here that we have a sine function, we have a cos function, and you can see that they look different, but not all that much different, actually. If we took um, the sine function and we just shifted it over by, um, here, maybe I can show this in green. We shifted it over by exactly this much, by 90 degrees, right? Then they would actually be the exact same graph. Or if we shifted this over this way, right? You can imagine it doesn't matter which one you go, but uh, if you shift one of them 90 degrees, we would get to um, the same thing. Okay, so there's a few other things we have to think about with uh, periodic functions, uh, periodic graphs. Uh, we just have to know how to read them, and so. Um, We'll look at reading them a little bit more in the next topic, but before we get there, there are a few uh, terms that we have to know. Midline is the horizontal line halfway between max and min. And in these cases, um, right down the center is the midline. So right down the center, um, right along the x-axis in this case. But I will label it here anyway. Midline. All right, um, we can also notice oops, uh, that the amplitude, or maybe I can use a different color here. Um, it's this color. Okay, the amplitude is uh, the height from the midline to the max, or the midline to the minimum. So probably um, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Just go to the closest uh, maximum and just go with that. So um, it could be, but again, it could be the maximum. It could be the minimum. So we could also certainly go down this way. And that distance that it gives you is the amplitude. Okay. And Last but not least, uh, we have the period, and the period is the dif distance from start to finish of a cycle. So you can determine that however you'd like, um, but usually the easiest way to look at that is to look at peak to peak. So here in the close function, that's from beginning to end. Uh, so from there to there, the distance there, the length would be the period. Okay, you can also look at trough to trough. Uh, 
So down here would also work just fine. So the distance here is the exact same. Um, or you can pick any other point. And so maybe the zero on the, um, on the sine function. And then you look for the same point later. But it can't just be another zero like this is. It has to be a zero going the same direction. So this is a zero going up, right? And so you have to get to another zero going up, right? So this is the period here. So you, you'll notice that the sine and cos functions, they both have the period of 360 degrees. All right. Uh, and M. All right, I hope this video helps you understand periodic graphs, uh, especially the, the parent function sine and cos sine functions a little bit better. Good luck.